Okay. Okay, so uh, as I was just saying, if anybody has any requests or questions or anything like that, uh, uh, throw it into the chat room. Uh, keep the mics on, on mute unless uh, uh, we have a uh, question there and then shoot up a hand if you, uh, if you want uh, to you want to, uh, any clarification. I, I like to make this as interactive as possible. So uh, if you can just, uh, you know, uh, if, if I say something that you don't quite understand, or uh, you'd like to further clarify, uh, I'm most receptive to that. So uh, just get, get my attention somehow, either through the chat room or, or uh, signaling me. But uh, uh, let's uh, proceed to the fun part here. So uh, uh, one thing I would like to start with, and this is kind of underscores everything that I've been doing in the last couple of years. And that is shifting our state of awareness, our state of being, as we do the, uh, the internal martial arts and Qigong. And uh, so it, I put it under the heading of first feel, then do. And by feel, I don't mean emotions. I mean actual tactile sense. That way you, it's the, 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 the sense of touch is, um, is really fundamental, probably the most fundamental of all the, of all the senses is something that is, uh, we share with, with all kinds of, of our animal friends and it bypasses the intellect. But it, what it does, whenever you bring your conscious awareness to the feeling, something magical happens. You awaken part of your brain that had been asleep. So the, um, the conscious mind is dominated most of our day by what's called the default mode network. And that's part of the brain. It's the different processes which are designed to update our narrative, our personal narrative, moment by moment. They keep us informed about what we're thinking, what we're feeling, what we're doing, not like that, but what's going on in the environment around us and, and what other people are thinking and doing and constantly chattering away and, and doing this on a, a really fundamental level so that anytime we're not consciously directing our attention, this thing is, is humming away in the background. And it serves a survival purpose. That is, it reminds you of where you are and what you're doing and what the potential dangers that might be out there and what you should be doing. And, and also at the same time, reminding you about all the bad things that happened in the past so that you don't make those same mistakes again and things like that. And this thing is just whirring away when we're not consciously doing something else. So whenever you activate, consciously activate your sense of touch, something rather remarkable happens. That quiets and you move into the gap between thoughts. And you move into a state of whole brain coherence. So whatever parts of your brain that happen that can be awakened they are they get you get a chance to wake them up so it also allows you to access information and energy that is not available to you in that other mode in that default mode because in that mode in the default mode things are being reduced into bits of information that are being where you're objectifying the world around you and turning it into thought forms, which is, like I say, it's a, it's a survival mechanism, but it is not necessarily the one you want to have going 24 seven. You want to shut that guy down a little bit every now and then and be able to move into the, the gap between thoughts where you're able to access your, a much bigger part of your nervous system than you ever thought possible. And then that opens the door to expanded states of awareness and expanded states of, of being. 
is also the state where Taiji happens. That that expanded state that where you moved into a state where where you're able to know without thinking because you've shifted from the the relative simplicity of of a handheld calculator into a quantum computer very fast it does take time to get up to speed on how to use this quantum computer that is your mind but it it's uh, the potential is there and we get to it very quickly by entering it through the physical by embodying our consciousness so that we actually bringing awareness to this to the feeling and then that opens up the other senses so you know we're you know as william blake said we're we're cleansing the doors of perception he says if we if the doors of perception are cleansed we see everything as it is infinite for man has closed himself up and sees only through the chinks in his cavern so that that default mode network is the chinks in the cavern it's that little that tiny little aperture which which we perceive the world but we don't have to we can we can actually expand the awareness so we can move beyond that so as a practical matter um let's learn how to feel and it, it sounds funny to say that because it's um it's something we've been doing forever but most of the time it's happening at a pre-conscious level that is your you're getting information from your five senses but your conscious mind is make quickly making thought forms out of that so it's not that we we are feeling it's we're thinking about feeling we immediately go from the touch oh that feels hot you know we go from the actual experience to oh that feels hot and we go and make a story out of it and and it converts that into a thought form which then takes us out of the present moment and puts us back in our heads so a little exercise that uh that i like to do to to explore this is to i'm going to slide back here a little bit so you can see the it start by putting your your hands on your knees and you feel your your left knee with your left hand so we're going to consciously take over something which you do automatically automatically that was you were feeling your your left knee with your left hand but when you do that, you're probably not as conscious of your right knee, your right hand on your right knee. So shift to that and feel your right knee with your right hand. And notice when you do that, you are feeling your left knee a little bit less. Because your consciousness is, is shifted to your right knee. Now shift back to your left knee, feel that with your left hand. Now feel your right knee with your right hand. Now we're going back to the left, but this time I want you to feel your left hand with your left knee. That is, you're going to use your knee, the tactile sense in your knee, to feel your hand. So this uses a different part of your brain to do that, and a different part of your nervous system to do that. Now go to your right knee and feel your right hand with your right knee. Now look at your mind and notice that you're in the gap between thoughts. You're in the present moment. And feel into your energy right now and notice how connected up you feel. There's a sense of fullness of wholeness that pervades your whole system 
Now go back and feel your left knee with your left hand. So you're bringing your awareness to your hand. If it if it helps, you can give it. You can move your hand a little bit and give it a, give your knee a squeeze so that you can actually use the tactile sense in your in your left hand to make that to make that work. What I'm talking about sounds incredibly simple, and maybe even like dumb, but it's actually we're cultivating, we're creating new neural connections every time we do this. It's such a simple exercise, yet it actually creates new neural connections whenever you do that. Now, give your right knee a squeeze and, and feel the knee with your hand. Now go back and feel your left hand with your knee. So you're actually looking through your body and you're feeling from the inside. You're not thinking about it, you're doing it. You're actually exploring the tactile sense. Now feel your right hand with your right knee. Actually look through your body and feel your knee. Feel your hand with your knee. And stop a moment and just be there and notice what that has done to your awareness. You shifted into a super conscious state. That is your body mind has integrated and opening the, the third eye, the eye of spirit. In that state of wholeness, we move into a, a state of awareness that allows us to access something much bigger, allows us to move into the present moment in a radical way. Now we're gonna take this same thing and grab your left elbow with your right hand. and feel your left elbow with your right hand. Now, reach out your elbow just a little bit so you're putting a little bit of pressure against the, against the hand and feel the hand with your elbow. Now, Feel your elbow with your hand. You're looking through your body and using your tactile sense, consciously activating your tactile sense. You're, you're using your consciousness to awaken your sensory neural network. Your afferent nervous system. Now feel the hand with your elbow. Reach out, press out with that with the hand and, and feel the elbow, or feel, uh, feel the elbow, use your elbow to feel your hand. And notice the effect that this is having on the rest of your body. Because what's happening here too, if you reach out with your elbow, you're opening up the shoulder, which traps a lot of chi and creates, it, it kinks the hose of the shoulder because We've been activating, moving from the shoulder since we were toddlers, and we, it's become an unconscious pattern. So if we just feel the el feel the the hand with the elbow, it brings the awareness down and it unlocks the kink in the hose. Now we go to the other side. Grab your elbow with your hand, and feel the elbow. Now reach out with the elbow and press against the hand and feel the hand with the elbow. Now feel the elbow with the hand. Now feel the hand with the elbow. Press out against it and feel that. Good, now let that go. 
and now using just reaching out a little bit with your elbows as if you're just kind of creating a little space there feel into your elbows it's not something that we ordinarily bring much awareness to but feel into the elbows I just notice what that does to your internal state, how that transforms your energy, transforms your state of being. You generate a state of wholeness. And with it comes a tremendous amount of, of internal power, jin. This is elbow jin. And uh, Marie, you want to give me a hand with this? Can you? Uh, can you take a yeah, sure. so just so to demonstrate the the uh, let's get back up here. So if if Maria is going into a ward off posture and I press in and her posture, if she uses any kind of muscle strength to, to make that work, it, it collapses really easily. But Maria just reaches out a little bit with her with her elbow and then just opens up it. And immediately she she the whole structure comes and becomes unified and becomes super powerful and without any any effort at all. But if I can distract her and say, hey, what's this here? And take her awareness away from her elbow. <laughs> she didn't like that. So, <laughs> so the the same thing, if I if I grab her wrist like this and she and I say, you're coming with me, lady. And she says, oh, no. She feels into her elbow, and she's able to lift me up, uproot me immediately just by feeling that and just turning just turning the wrist. So she's, uh, it, it generates this, this tremendous um, chin that comes from this whole body integration. Thank you. So the um, it's easier if I can put my hands on you so you can feel it. But trust me on this. Just give it, give it, uh, give it some try. Give it a try and and let and play around with that. The uh, the point of this is I would like you to integrate this into your practice so that you when I say first feel then do. Feel your elbows. So to say, if I'm doing a, a ward off posture, instead of moving like this from the shoulder, which creates a weakness in the structure, it kinks the hose at there. I, if I come up and I set my elbow first and then open, something remarkable happens. So why don't everybody just try that out? You uh, get the going like a uh, uh, like a, a ward off posture, so bring your bring your hand down like this, set your elbow, and then just bring your forearm up. And then try it lifting from the shoulder. Just try lifting from the shoulder and notice how weak, fragile, and broken that that feels. How that disrupts the energy. But if you just set the elbow first and then open like that, boom. This now has chin. It has pong chin in it and ward off energy. And you don't have to work. You get effortless power very, very quickly, very easily. Ah. So I would like to, to have, uh, like you to include that in, in your motion. So what we're going to do now is uh, a set the way he started last week. This time, though, I would like you to include that principle and uh, with uh, the, the various exercises we're doing. And I'm, I'm going to talk you through the uh, through the whole set. So this is a my reclaiming lost territory set. And this is something that I've been doing for got about 25 years now. I've made it up. I made it up basically to rehabilitate myself because I was I experienced a bunch of injuries and. Uh, I had done it to, to reclaim 
my range of motion with my back and my shoulders and and uh, 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 to be able to energize and open up the joints and uh, and it's something that I've been using as a warm-up set with uh, my classes for for years now but so we start with uh, put your right foot forward and Feel the ball of your right foot. Bring your right knee out and set it over the ball of the foot. And then pick up your left heel. So your 99.9% .9 of your weight is on your, on your right foot. You're just on the toe of your back foot. Okay? So you're setting the knee. So that means the knee is not going to move, right? It's not going to wobble side to side. It's just going to stay there. You've got it. It's planted into the ground. So all the motion is going to happen from the hip joint, the quad, right? And so bring your, put your hands on your hips because I want your shoulders and hips to move together. And you're just gonna turn nice and easy from the quad without moving your knee and without, without pushing your butt out to the side. So you're just rotating around this pivot point, utilizing the hip joint to make that happen. So, and it's a nice, easy movement. It's not a stretch. You're not forcing anything. You're just relaxing and getting sung kwa. Sung means to release into the intrinsic structure of your body. Okay. And so, but we to do that, we need to establish our foundation. And that foundation is in the foot, the ball of the foot, and the knee. The knee sets the foundation. And if I move the knee around at all, then I lose my root. I lose my structure. I then have to compensate my upper body stiffening up in order to make something, to make it happen, to make it work. So we're just going nice and easy. Just like a swinging door. We're just, you know, just like a screen door, swing in there. And nothing, you're not forcing anything. You're just allowing that to to relax and release and as you do that you're releasing downward your your energy is allowing to go down and you're instead of pushing away from the earth you're releasing down into the earth and allowing the body to to acclimate to that now shift into your back foot and pick up your front heel same idea feel the ball of the left foot set the left knee and release the qua, sung qua, sung releasing down the, the caricature, the ideogram for sung comes from a, uh, this picture of a, of a pine tree and with the branches just falling down. So if you think of a Christmas tree, how sometimes when you get a Christmas tree and they're all bundled up like this and then you you let it set for a couple of days and then they ah oh, they they find their place right they find oh this is this is where i want to be and that's soon is you're releasing down into where it ought to be and so it's a releasing down relaxing into the qua breathing as you do that and getting confidence of your that you're finding your central equilibrium. You're pivoting around this very narrow central pole that is, you know, there's a sweet spot there where when you plug into it, good stuff happens. Okay, put your left foot forward and set your left knee. Feel the ball of your left foot. Pick up your right heel. Okay, same idea here. You're releasing down into your left quad. You're releasing any hip tension, any butt tension, everything relaxes. Your, your right leg is just sort of hanging out. It's all, it's all gummy. And your left leg is taking the entire load. You're going to find that your left leg might get a little tired, your weight-bearing leg, because it's, you're asking it to do something. Instead of pushing away from the earth, you're asking it for it to assume a, a yin posture, a passive, a passive strength. That is, you're, you're just receiving the load 
rather than actively pushing away. So it's a different kind of, of exercise than say doing a squat where you're sinking down and pushing up using muscular contraction to make that happen. Here we're actually releasing the muscles and using the connective tissue system as our support network. Yeah, and then shift into your back foot, your right foot, pick up your left heel, feel the ball of your left, your, your right foot, set your left knee over the ball of the foot, and you don't want to move that. So everything's happening here at the quad. You're releasing here. Reach upward with, from your, your knee one, your, the crown of your head, and open up the, the, the back of your neck there as you do that, the jade pillow gate. We'll get to that in a minute. But, but get, just get used to your, your rotating around that axis. And you can do this a long time. You know, it's just, this is an exercise that that you can do for, for quite a while on your own. We're not gonna do it forever, but we're gonna do it. Uh, uh, you had something to say there, dude? <laughs> You've done it for a long time. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> um, all right. So now we're going to the next thing. We're going, to, we're going to open the jade pillow gate. So this is this point here, right at the base of your skull. So you can, you can feel into that. It's right at the topmost vertebra, your atlas. And you want to pivot your head so that you're pivoting from this point, okay? And you're going to find you're stretching your muscles as you do that, the muscles in your neck. But you lift the chin and drop and feel the stretch down your back as you do that. So the jade pillow gate is an important energy passageway so when it's kinked up when the hose is kinked in the jade pillow gate then you are blocking your chi seriously and whenever you open that up then you get what's called essential hardness or spiritual force this is what ching man ching called it that you activate this whole body energetic connection that allows you energy to you to access energy that you can't find elsewhere and anytime you're you're touching your chin forward your neck, neck is cranked up then you're going to be blocking that so now reach out with your right arm and reach out with your head to the left and feel the tissues lengthening along your arm and you can move the arm around, move the head around, find out where it's gonna give you the most benefit. Yeah, and then go to the other side. So I'm taking a little longer with these this week because I want you to understand what goes into these exercises. There's not just a bunch of you know things that you memorize and do them. It's like there's there's something uh, there's a lot of essentials that we're practicing here, a lot of fundamentals that uh, that are incredibly valuable, and you want to work them into your not just your 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 tai chi or qigong, but also work them into your life, so that you're so that whenever you you know a hundred times a day, you just adjust your your head so that you get open that jade pillow gate, so that and uh, you want to feel the the shoulders opening up, the neck opening up. We're reclaiming lost territory. Because as we get older, we have a tendency to contract and get smaller. And we don't want to do that. We want to, ah, we want to get bigger. Okay, so uh, next thing we want to do is to, to, we're going to release the spine. Okay, and we're, what we're going to do is we're going to roll it down one vertebra at a time. Speed it up, it's going to look like this. I'm going to go like this. and. I'm going to release the spine and one piece at a time. Knees are bent and I go down, 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 down and till I get down to here and then I'm gonna straighten the knees and drop down. But uh, we're gonna do it slowly. Okay, so begin to just bring your chin in, open up the neck and just 
little piece at a time. Breathe as you do it. Breathe deep. Use your breath to allow you to relax your back muscles. Now straighten your knees and continue to drop. Don't force anything, just allow your body to hang. Allow your muscles to lengthen, your connective tissue to lengthen as you do that. And then bend your knees and come up and stack up your vertebra, your vertebrae, one on top of the other as you come up. And now bring your hands up and arch your back like this. You're arching your back, opening the shoulders, opening the chest. Breathe. And then come up. Good. And then round your back. And then arch your back. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, opening shoulders, opening chest, creating space. Good. Okay. That's all we're going to do on that. There's more, more of those exercises, but I want to just move on to other things now. That's the initial part of the, uh, the reclaiming loss territory exercises. So uh, let me talk a minute about poles in opposition. Energy is created by poles in opposition. That is, if you the tension between two points generated by your awareness is what generates energy flow. Your capacity to do two things at once greatly enhances your, your capacity to generate energy. To be able to do more than one thing at once, it really helps to be able to move into that superconscious state, just like we did earlier. And that means feel first, then do. So if you... Uh, If you bring your, put your hands together and pull them apart, like an isometric exercise, you're pulling and feel into that, okay, that opposition there is generating a certain amount of energy. Now let that go. Now bring your hands up. And this time, don't strain with your muscles, but just feel that pulling apart. You've just had the sense of it. Now feel into that. It's fresh in your mind. And feel what that feels like to pull apart. 
without using your muscles. Good, now let that go. Now bring your hands opposite each other without touching and pull them apart. Get the, I don't want you to imagine it. I want you to feel what it feels like to pull those two apart without moving. And feel the energy that's being generated. Now let that go. Now with your hands dropped, feel, feel into your left hand, feel into your right hand, and feel them pulling apart without moving, without contracting your muscles at all. That's what I mean by poles in opposition. Now, imagine you're pushing them together and feel into that. Feel the energy that's being generated throughout your whole body as you do that. Now reach out slightly with your elbows. Feel into your elbows and feel them reaching in opposite directions. And notice what that's doing to your state of being. Feel into your energy. Now feel into your hands, feel them lifting up, but so don't move. And as you're doing that, also feel into your feet sinking down as your hands lift up. And feel the energy there. Holes in opposition. Now feel into your new one, your the crown point of your head, right around your hair whirl there. Okay, reach up with that, opening the jade pillow gate. So you're reaching up with that at the same time, feeling the floor, reaching down through the floor as you do that. Feel your spine lengthening as you do that, as you relax the muscles and, and feel yourself reaching without pushing, without muscular contraction. So we're creating poles in opposition there. So the, the crown point, the, the knee one, the crown point is your, is the yang pole and your feet are the yin pole. You feel the chi circulating throughout your body. You want to feel this before you do. You feel the elbows before you move. You feel the feet. The beautiful thing about it in the superconscious state is you are not limited by the narrow limitations of the conscious mind. Your conscious mind can handle seven things plus or minus two at once. It's a very narrow bandwidth of information. Whereas in a superconscious state, you're able to access and handle many things simultaneously. You're just not thinking about them. You're knowing without thinking. Okay, so let's uh, let's take that and this is an old exercise that uh, I remember today that um, feed about 
hip width apart, uh, get nice and loose there. And uh, what we're going to do is a very simple exercise, and that is you're going to sink down into the floor, feel the balls of your feet, set your knees, you're sinking down, you're getting that, you're releasing the quad, so you can even do boom, boom, like that. So in a very speeded up way, it's going to look like this. We're going to come up, hands overhead, hold the hands, and then hands come down, okay, like that. So I'd like you to just do that without any further instructions. So just bring your arms up like this, as you would ordinarily do. Bring your hands overhead. Good, and then bring them down. And just get the feeling of what you just did there. Now feel the balls of your feet, set your knees. We're gonna do it much slower. We're also gonna activate first the elbows. Just bring your elbows out. Feel that first. So just feel into your hands and notice immediately they start to fill up. It didn't take anything. Just, just bring your elbows out slightly and oh, your, your hands start to pulse and throb and and get very full. The circulation in your hands just dramatically increases. You feel tingling, maybe some heat. Now we're going to come up and reach with the wrists. Very slowly. And feel everything. Feel the connection throughout your body as you do this. Relax your shoulders. Reach with your elbows, reach with your wrists. Sink into the, into the ground, feel the earth. Feel the connections throughout your body as you do this. Not just your arms doing it, everything is participating. Bring your hands together overhead. Reach up with your hands and sink deeper into the earth. Feeling the poles in opposition. Breathe deeply. And separate your hands. Reach with your elbows. Slowly come down. Feeling each step of the way. Feel your hands, feel your elbows, feel your shoulders, feel your feet, feel your knees. Reach with your knee one, feel the top of your head, feel the jade pillow gate, the base of the skull. Feel the energy, feel the, the, the air that you're pressing against, feel the space. Feel inside your body and feel the increased circulation, the heat, the tingling, pulsing, the sense of fullness. Breathe. And uh, rotate your Forearms so your palms are facing backward. Reach out with your elbows. Arms are slightly rounded. Feel into 
the power of that posture. Now very slowly, rotate your forearms. So you're gonna open, you're rotating your forearms from the elbow. Feel into your hands as you do this. Rotate so your hands are palms forward. Spread your fingers, open the hands. Breathe. And very relax your hands and slowly rotate the forearms. Rotating from the elbow, not from the shoulder. Now your palms are facing backward, elbows are out slightly from your body, shoulders are relaxed. Reach with your knee one. Tuck in your chin, open the jade pillow gate. Feel the balls of your feet. Breathe diaphragmatically. Sink into the earth. Feel the pole of your niwan reaching up. Feel the pole of your feet extending down feeling your roots down into the earth. Feel the earth chi coming up through the balls of your feet, up to the, through the bubbling well, not the balls of your feet, but to the bubbling well, the kidney one point. Feel the earth chi coming up through your body, mingling with the energy within your body, out to the top of your head. Feel the yang chi of the heavens coming down through the ni wan, down through your body and out through your feet. Feel yourself connected to the big chi. It's moving through you and it will fill you up as much as you can tolerate. You're not storing any energy, you're allowing that to circulate through. Allow any kinks in the hose, any tension in your body to dissolve. Good. Now step in. Deep breath. Bring your hands up. Gathering. Now press down. Exhale. As if you're pushing on a plunger. You're pushing that energy out throughout the throughout the bottom to the bottom of your feet. Yes, Zoe. Stuff happening here. And dissolve the energy. Get rid of it all. Relax and just dissolve into the emptiness. Feel yourself settling into the gap between thoughts.
Allow the nature chi to move through you, the big chi, uninhibited by the constrictions and muscular tensions that normally might be there. Okay. You got five minutes so you can take questions. Okay. Do you want gallery view? Uh, sure. All right. So, uh, uh, anybody have any questions? And uh, happy to answer anything. Uh, also, um, just uh, unmute yourself if you, yeah, uh, Linda. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to ask. Um, I've been doing a lot of like sitting at my desk and, and I'm. I noticed in the beginning they were like knots right behind my shoulders of tension. Yeah. And it took a long time as we were working to go through that. Um, I was wondering, like in the beginning, um, is there something um, that I can do from the beginning rather than have to go through that whole process before I finally am able to let that tension go? Uh, that's, that's a really good question. And I think the key to it is right there okay right there and right here the crown point okay if when i'm sitting if i'm sitting and i'm like this then i'm going to i'm kicking the hose in many places and but if i whenever i'm sitting i want to make it an active sitting rather than just slumping I'm reaching with my knee one as I sit and reach out with the elbows, just feel into the elbows. So say you're typing, you're feeling your elbows as you type, you're feeling your knee one as you do that. So what's happening is you're also learning how to process information and create while in that super conscious state as you're doing that. So if you were to consider that the neck tension that you're experiencing and the shoulder tension is just a, is like a, a car alarm, you know, it's, it's there saying, Linda, Linda, <laughs> you're, you're bunched up, Linda, <laughs> right? So it's, you're not looking at that as, that is not the problem. It is just your body saying, how can I get Linda's attention? Ah, I got it. Pain. It's always worked in the past. <laughs> it's the softest possible voice that spirit speaks, right? The spirit speaks in the softest voice that we'll listen to. And so pain, okay, that's down the list, right? That's after I've ignored a bunch of other stuff. And I speak for all of us here because we all do that. That's we all have that 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 thing there. So so yes, there are lots of things you can do to remedy that specific uh, issue. But the main thing is it's there to tell you, no, no, you gotta, you gotta be doing Tai Chi while you're, while you're writing, you know, and you're, you tuck in the chin, you reach with the knee one, you open the jade pillow gate and, and you reach with the elbows like, whoa, you know, you're off to the races. Yeah. Man, funny, funny enough, I didn't even know that tension was there until we got started. Right. And then it was just like and, these and, and, knots and, behind my shoulder. I'm like, where the hell did that come from? But, <laughs> so and, I, and, I can so true. So true. That. We get so involved in what we're doing and we 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 bunch up and, and we the neck is, and, and shoulders are like, you know, real uh stop uh they're like fuse boxes for the for the energy of the system. Anybody else? Oh, Howard Parks has a question. Howard, Howard, unmute. Can you unmute him? Are you um, chi connected to the breath? Uh, can you speak a little louder? I'm, I can't quite hear you. Is the chi connected to the breath in when you're standing? So is there a, a conscious awareness of circulation or you let just let it happen? Uh, either or. So it, uh, there, if you can incorporate that too, then it's even better. But it's, uh, um, you know, the, in, in uh, William Chen's uh, Kaiji, you know, the, 
the in breath is on the yang and the out breath is on the yin. And so, which is the, the exact opposite of a lot of other styles, but that's uh, that's the way I do it. That's like, so as you inhale, you expand, just like you're blowing up the balloon. And as you exhale, ooh, you're releasing. So that's that's the, the general rule on that. But there's a lot of other stuff that we can talk about in breathing. We can do that next time too. We can we can get into the breath as well, to, how to coordinate that. Today, I just wanted to uh, emphasize the the nigong part rather than the than the qigong part. The you know how to how to work with the energy, and then we can work with the breath next time. Um, anybody else? Any other? Scott. So more of a comment than a question, but. Um, when we were doing that first exercise, yeah. Uh, so you know, had the hands on the knees. Yeah. So I decided to try feeling my right knee with my left hand uh -huh. while they were still on the, you know, on the same same right. ones. Oh my God! <laughs> the energy was just. Valerie tried it and she didn't really feel it, but for me it was just incredible. Cool. Cool. Yeah, that's a that's that, that's a really good. Uh, a really good addition to that too. One of the things that we're doing when we're we're shifting back and forth like that is we're generating hemispheric synchronization. So we're activating left, right, left, right, the, the lobes of, of the, the hemispheres of the brain, which then creates a whole different level of, of functioning. You bring your brain into coherence by doing that. This is something I've been exploring for like 30 years, hemispheric synchronization. But it's a it um, this is a real quick and dirty way to get to get there. So you just, just, just feel, feel left side, feel right side, back and forth. And then within seconds, you're able to get into a state of hemispheric synchronization. Anybody else? Lynn. Oh, oh, Lynn. I just want to say thanks for the elbows because I mentioned them last week. I found them. I've been using them all week. And oh, they're great. Who knew I had them? Yeah, I have the bruises. Who knew? <laughs> it's crazy. It's it's it, they're they're buried there in plain sight. <laughs> they're wonderful. They and it just it's there's so much more to discover with that too. It just it's incredible. I'll keep working on it. Okay, anybody else? Uh, I think that's it. If there are no more questions, then you can gently eat. Okay, End so we're, we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> sign off here. Thank you all so much for uh, for participating. Very happy they're here. We'll be doing this again next uh, next Wednesday. So uh, look forward to seeing you and uh, have a great week. Stay safe and uh, <laughs> uh, I love you all. Love Bye -bye. you guys. Thanks, Rick and Thank you. Bye. 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 Everybody. Bye now. Thank you, Rick. Bye. I couldn't see what Rick was doing. Good night. Thank you, Rick. Good night. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Beautiful. Did I just end it? Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye.